What's going on, guys? It is Real Labs on Real Radio. It is November the 3rd. It is election night, baby. And you, I'm joining the studio by my homeboys, yo. I got Mr. Mike Hurley He from the Obligatory Podcast, <laughs> um, writer of, of the Lowdown. And that boy that did that, that boy was going to be a lawyer. Yeah, that boy was yeah. going to free OJ Simpson, and I didn't even know about it. <laughs> yeah. You know, you know what? You know what I hate about it? not. I know we ruin the illusion all the time, but we pre-record our shows. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So right now it's Tuesday night. It's election fever. Something terrible could have happened right now. Something horrible <laughs> could have been happened. But we're still gonna have a conversation like nothing's Nothing wrong happened. whatsoever. Yep. So uh, yeah, uh, I hope you got out today. I hope you got to vote. I hope when you're hearing this, you're watching uh, the the. Uh, the voting going on and you're happy with your guy. And I hope your guy is my guy, you know? So I, I just don't know, man. I just don't know. This is, this is such a stressful time. Like I can't wait for it to be over, but at the same time, I'm really hoping it goes my way. Yeah. I think the best part of this night is going to be the next day when all these people who are emotionally invested in this election have to go to work and act like nothing happened. Yeah. Like there's going to be people emotionally distraught. It, 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 it dude, just, I, can, I, I can see some people in that voice you hear before we go on. I can that voice you hear is James Alonzo Yan, the, the yes. head guy yes. of the, of the lowdown and one of the original members of this uh, radio show. Yeah. Um, James, I don't know, man, like, there are going to be some people, upset folks. It's going to be some upset folks, and some people are going to lose their jobs because you're going to go to work mad. You're going to say some stuff. <laughs> like, like if, 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 if Trump loses, you're going to drop a couple of N-words in there, and you're going to either get fired or get that ass whoop. If unless Biden, if Biden unless loses, you work at you Starbucks, black, unless you, you might get a promotion. <laughs> yeah. yeah. If well, Biden loses, somebody going to come, black person going to come in here and say, which one of these white people say something to me today if they want to? I'm going to, you know. Well, did you guys know, see, like, there's been a couple of instances already where employers or employees have posted to social media letters from their employers saying, hey, look, we're not telling you how to vote. Yes, but we're, we're saying is if that. this candidate wins, we're going to have to cut our workforce. Yeah, I saw but we're that. not telling wow. you how to vote. Yeah, we're not that. telling you how to vote. <laughs> and the, you and can the black vote for th- whoever you want, but this is what we have to hey, do. Hey, Mike, guy and the brother yeah. that posted that quit that job that day. Oh he really? Said, I, yeah, he said I wouldn't. I, I can't work for this guy. He really loved his boss. He says he was such a good guy, and I can't believe he was sending out. But the boss is like, "Look, man, this is how much money we make. If yeah. if, if Biden gets it and his tax plan passes, mm-hmm. I can't afford to pay you guys that. I can't afford to take care of you guys. So I I get it what he's saying. He didn't need to send the email out though. Mm-hmm. I get what he's Stop. saying. I get what he's saying. He's like, look, we make this amount of money. We're going to be taxed. As a club owner, you know, I won't say the club name, but he he votes heavy Republican. Mm-hmm. And he's like, I'm a, I'm a business owner. I make this mm-hmm. amount of money. So that means I'm going to get taxed this way. Now, I don't think they understand how the tax really works. They just hear 30 percent. They're like, oh, my God, he's going to take 30, 40 percent. I don't it's think they understand how yep. it really works. They just well, see the 30, 40 percent of things that some, have with their income is going to be. Someone good. on Facebook put, let me do some simple math for you people out here. Let's say I make 400,000. Now all of a sudden I'm getting taxed on 60. I'm getting 60 percent tax on that. So I'm making this. And then I just commented. I'm like, it's over 400,000. You're getting taxed for everything over 400,000. So if you make 425,000, that 400,000 is at the regular tax percentage. That 25 thousand over is getting taxed at the higher tax rate and he just deleted the whole thing <laughs> <laughs> because nobody does research no nobody no, no dude I, I i got into it with a comic one time on facebook he's one of those guys that are post uh those those websites those satire sites but he believes them and i yeah. said you gotta understand what you're putting in the atmosphere right now young man i say if it's not real okay oh yeah you're right man it isn't Okay, well, take it down. Take it down. How, yeah, how take it down. You, how can you sit there and call CNN fake news, Fox fake news, ABC fake news? But here's a blog I found from a 13 year old living in Italy, <laughs> and he brings up some valid points. <laughs> what? Dude. What? <laughs> and there's a Photoshop you, picture of like Biden on Hitler's lap. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm like, yeah. Dude, yeah. Like, yo, no. he, he wasn't like, even born during that time. Like, he wasn't yeah. even born. He wasn't even alive. I don't know. Hold up. Biden might have been. Biden yeah. might have been alive. Yeah. Biden was yeah. at the Last Supper. He was serving. 
<laughs> Yo, I, I don't think Biden didn't sign the Constitution, but he definitely brought the paper to the menu. Yeah, yeah, he yeah, did. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. When you see the picture of the Constitution, it's a little boy in there. That's Biden. Biden. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. When Benjamin Franklin flew that kite and discovered electricity, he had stole the kite from Biden. <laughs> from Biden. <laughs> and I'll give it back to you. So think about this, though. You know, people say how he's sometimes incoherent and sometimes a little loopy. Say Biden wins yeah. and something happens to him. We're mm-hmm. going to have a black female president. Mm-hmm. Think well, about that, dude. Damn, if, I didn't if, think if, about if that. They, Can I get my vote back? Man, <laughs> I wasn't ready for that. No. Bro. Think about that. Kamala going to take away capital punishment and replace it with ass whoopings. <laughs> like, you want <laughs> <laughs> You're gonna be on ass whooping row. Like if- <laughs> Look, you know, you know what's crazy, man. I wouldn't be shocked if a lot of black men didn't vote for him because of her. Because of her mass incarceration rate in California. As the prosecutor in California. Yeah, yeah. You know, and Killer Mike, you guys know Killer Mike, the, yeah, the rapper. Yeah. I do. Killer Mike, Killer, Killer Mike, Killer Mike said like this- Bernie though, right? Killer Mike. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. He's Bernie a Bernie guy. guy. I'm, I'm yeah. a Bernie guy too. Me too. But Killer Mike said this. He says, if the Democrats want to get black men's vote in the South, all they need to do is apologize. Apologize for mass incarceration of young black men because of weed. You know, something that's, mm-hmm. that, that white people are making millions off of now. Yeah. That, that got kids life sentences. Yep. Or long-term sentences. You know, he said, if you, want, if you want to get the black vote, you, 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 the black South, black men in the South to vote for you, you need to come out and apologize. Say, hey, we were wrong. We're sorry. And if we get elected, we're going to do something to fix it. Mm-hmm. And will they do something to fix it? I don't know. You know, everybody promises. Some- I ran for student class, class president when I was in the ninth grade. I said I was going to put Kool-Aid in the water fountain. Yeah, mm-hmm. man. Me too. That was 100%. I really yeah, said that. That was my platform. Yeah. I said, I'm going to put Kool-Aid yeah. in the water fountain. Like, and if you don't like- vote for me, I'll put poison in the Kool-Aid. I'm going Jim <laughs> Jones on all y'all. <laughs> I didn't win, by the way. Just want y'all to know. I went to oh. all white school. Apparently, they don't know what Kool Aid is. They were like, well, "Is it breast <laughs> cup? Is it? They were like, is it, is it what, in it? <laughs> Yeah, but it is election night, so guys, please, like Mike said, go out and vote. And if your candidate doesn't win, it's gonna hey, be okay. It's gonna, it's be, gonna okay. be okay. Your we're life still is friends. really not going to change that much. It he, really isn't. Here's the interesting thing to me, though. Like, yeah. I've I've been voting the past four elections. Okay. I wasn't very politically active early on. Uh, I voted in the last four elections. And my guys have lost before. It happens. But the next morning, you just go, okay, we're back to business as usual. What I'm, right. what I'm sensing this time, though, is it's not just if Trump loses a Republican losing. It's Trump losing. Like, he is a brand for any any sense of the imagination. He's a brand. So it, it's it's like, what do you think all those people who are just, like, die hard? Not Republicans, <coughs> Trump, Trump fans. fans. How do they wake up tomorrow finding out they, Justin Bieber doesn't have a concert the next day? Do, you know? do, they, <laughs> do they take all the flags off the truck? Do they take all the right. signs down? Yeah. You can't yeah. remove the tattoo once it's what on about there. What like yeah, market there. vendors that just have you know a U-Haul full of Trump stuff? Yeah, you, you know what happens to them? What, what happens to them? Dude, I really don't think that I've seen... Um, and, and, and I'm, I'm not trying to be racist. If you're listening, you know who I'm not trying to be racist. I don't think I've seen white people disinvolved with the election ever in my mm-hmm. times of voting. Like if I'm driving down the street, they're on the corner, they're on the corner with their Trump flag. And it reminds me of when oh, Barack was running for his second term. Yes. Mm-hmm. Black yes. people were on the corner. Like we voted yeah. for Barack with Barack. Yeah. Like, like we were out, we voted Black people voted more in that election than any election, you know, in, in probably in, in decades mm-hmm. when Barack ran. But when Hillary ran, black people stepped back. Now, I, I will say this, you know, uh, when they say what won it for Trump last time was the silent, ma- the silent uh, majority, the people that that weren't coming out and saying who they were voting for. And this time around, like you just said, Ken, I see people on the corner for Trump. I don't see as many for Biden out there. No, that active. No. I see the trucks driving around with Trump's. I don't see any Biden. In my neighborhood, there's like 70 houses and there's 12 Trump signs. And I'm the only Biden sign in my neighborhood. What I'm seeing more now is people who aren't saying they're voting. Now, mind you, right now, polling in Florida, Biden is two points over Trump. 
So theoretically speaking, I should be seeing about equal people yeah. supporting. But what I'm really finding is there's a whole bunch of people that are voting for Biden that feel intimidated to put anything on their lawn that says this is who I'm going for, who feel intimidated to put any banner on their car, a sticker or anything else. It's really Trump's party has become the bullying party. And I feel yeah. like a lot of people, <laughs> the silent majority is for Biden now because they're yeah. like, that's who I'm voting for. I'm going to push back a little bit because you said uh, Trump's party. Um, I think Trump's become his own island now. It's people who, I don't know if Ken or you said it, Mike, I think people are not Republican and Trump fans. I think there's just Trump fans. I think yeah. people who never even said they were Republican before are like, I like Trump. I like the way that he talks. I like the message that he gets. I like the way he makes me feel. He gets me pumped up. So it's not just even Republican Democrat thing. It's just mm -hmm. a Trump thing. He is his own thing. I have not seen people pumped up for a candidate like this since Obama, like you since said, Obama. Cameron, I, I believe that since it's, Obama, like black folks were pumped for Obama. Uh, I think yes. Obama won the first term for the fact that Bush was so bad. I think a comedian said it. You know, Bush was so bad when it, they let a black man be president. Yeah, I, you know, I think really because Bush was so bad that Barack, they was like, man, let's just let's try this. The second term, I think black people were so pumped about it. But Mike, to go back to what you said, I do agree. I voted for Biden in my mail-in mail -in ballot. We mm -hmm. have a Biden-Harris sign. I tell my wife, we're not putting that in our yard. We're not yeah, putting that in our yard. It, I'm saying it's it's different. Right, cause people, will, people will legit die for Trump. They'll go to jail for Trump. They'll lose their job for Trump. I'm like, I'm like, nobody's about to run up in this house and kill us because of our vote. I just, I, really, I don't want that. I really thought last uh, Halloween night when I went trick or treating, I really thought when I came back home, the sign was going to be gone. Cause I figured if any night it was going to happen, it was going to happen on Halloween. Everybody's wearing masks. People are walking through your neighborhood. You know, that's why. And I will say this about my neighborhood. Uh, it's still there, which is nice, you know, because you see all this both sides. You see people swiping signs back. Yeah, oh, yeah. Both oh, yeah. Back. Definitely both sides. And, yeah. and, and it crossed my mind at some point to like, oh, let me booby trap this one. But I'm like, I don't want some stupid kid who doesn't know any better running up on my property, grabbing razor blade sign. You know, whatever. Take the sign. Yeah. Take the sign. But it's not going to be on my conscience that you can't play piano because you tried, you know? <laughs> so. But do you guys actively, actively tell people who you vote for? Like, I, like I tell you guys. I don't bring up friends. Or I tell people. No. I don't. But hey, you're a registered problem. Republican. I am. I am. Here's the problem. Um, and I'll be honest about this. And I've talked to people about this before. It's become a conversation like, who's your favorite baseball team? Mm -hmm. Like, let's say it, politics has become, this is my favorite team. And I'm going to talk trash about the other team no matter what. And it's become like Yankee fans. Trump fans are like Yankee fans. Mm -hmm. We have to ever talk to Yankee fans. They can be obnoxious. They can be... Uh, the like the Yankees is the greatest team ever. They don't want the most about, and it's like that when you talk politics nowadays. So I don't ever bring it up because it used to be when there was Bush against Barack. If you voted for Bush or said I was going to vote for him, it was like, oh man, ah, oh, you going to vote for him? That was it. Now, if I say that I'm a Trump supporter, it's oh my God, you are this, you are that, you are destroying America. You are it. it, it people judge your character now depending on who you say you're going to vote for. So I don't even bring it up anymore as a registered Republican who I may or may not be voting for or who I support because it just turns into a huge argument. James voted for Trump. So look. <laughs> <laughs> hey, James, people James, the only thing, the only thing I'm going to say, the only thing I'm going to say that's different with that with sports is Besides the San Francisco, uh, I think of a San Francisco Giants that forty nine ers that killed somebody in the parking lot. People won't kill you over sports. <laughs> True, <laughs> people will shoot you over your. The players, players will kill, kill their wives, but yeah, they will not. Kill <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're we gonna go to commercial break. When we come back, we'll talk more about the election. We'll talk about national holidays, and we got a, some pretty cool birthdays. Like okay. one of the Kardashians. We'll be back after a commercial break. Welcome back to Real Laughs on Real Radio. I'm your host tonight, Ken Miller. Um, Miguel C uh, Colon Jr. couldn't be here. He is in jail tonight. Mm -hmm. um, so, guys, make sure if you go to 33rd.com, um, look up Miguel Colon Jr. Put some money on that boy books, man. He's mm -hmm. going to be there for about 24 hours, man. He needed it because yeah, he's about to take that booty. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'm joined in virtual studio with my favorite white brother, Michael Hurley. What's up, Michael? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Not much, man. Not much. It's uh, you know, really exciting week. 
Real exciting it's, week. Bro, it's exciting. It's election week, man. It's, yeah. it's probably one of the most tense elections we've ever had. It's, it's my dad. It, it's very tense, man. My my dad's actually having knee surgery on today on election day, and uh, I told him I'm like, man, you know, I know who I voted for, but I really hope your surgeon guy one you know <laughs> surgery's already tricky without the guy just coming in like you believe this do yeah. you believe that just yeah. put them on the table really <laughs> really that's true that's knee true. Surgery, is, was he an athlete or he just he just getting old and need them knees fixed nah man he's just he's just getting up there he's a larger guy i'm the only one in my family the only one of the males in my family under like six four so okay. he's been big all his life but he was always a heavier guy and then just over the past few years all that weight on the knees man yeah man so yeah. he got he got one replaced uh, about four months ago and now he's got this one going and they're going to fix uh he's also got acl they're fixing on this one they're like Ooh, we're doing it all in one man yep. tell your dad whatever he give he get hydro percocet or something hit me up I he won't do it. Dollars. okay he, on my, the air yeah, yeah, that's how we're my doing dad it. Okay. my dad is one of those guys man he won't do pills Okay, yeah, but, he, but he could get the prescription and send it to us. We, we'll take <laughs> yeah, them, all the more we'll reason to send it. Yeah, tell Pops we'll yeah. sell the form, but and then that can Mike, take care of the medical bills. Yeah, when yeah. I had my vasectomy, they gave me two uh, refills of Percocet. I didn't take one pill. It made me—I really? can't take them. Take, they make me sick to my stomach. Mm -hmm. I would tell you. With I, I, did I ever tell you what happened when my dad took pills? Mm -mm. What? Okay, my dad had. Uh, he had been leaving a party with my mom, tripped over the DJ sound stuff in the parking lot because it was by the curb. They were loading it up, tripped over a speaker, fell and broke his elbow. So Dang. they had so they had to. Uh, no, sorry, not the elbow, the uh, socket up here. The uh, Rot so, rotary. Yeah, rotary. Yeah, right, so yeah, right. so they took him to the hospital and they uh, gave him some pain meds after they did the surgery. And he was lying in bed one night sleeping and my mom was lying next to him and he just uh, starts singing. How much for that dog in the window? Roof, roof. So my mom tries to wake him up and he won't wake up. And he's just like high on drugs, but sleeping, singing this song. And he's like, how much for that dog in the window? Ooh, ooh. So she gets out of bed to try and get on the other side to shake him. And he's like, well, you mean the damn dog's not for sale? Why'd you put it in the window if it's not for sale? I'm not leaving here without that dog. And then he took his fist and he swung it. And if my mom hadn't got out of bed to check him, there's still like, you know, when you walk in someone's house, you're like, See all the holes in the drywall? You're yeah, like, yeah. oh, there's a hole in the headboard from where his he hand, it was right where my mom's head would have been if she hadn't got wow. out of bed. So since that, she sleeps on the couch and he doesn't do drugs. That's it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Seems right. Seems that right. was like, oh, that was like 20 yeah. years ago, man. Jesus. And then we're also joined in the studio by James, the Republican yawn. That's bum, right. Bum, That's bum, right. Bum, yeah. bum, 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 we bum, know bum, who bum. James voted for. He won't tell us, but we know. Mm-hmm. We know James did a right in vote for Bush. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna get my happen. president back. I'm gonna happen. get my president back, mm -hmm. man. Mm -hmm. Oh mm -hmm. man, yeah. But it's election night, guys. Make sure y'all we, we we pray that you went out and voted. And and, and if, if it doesn't go your way, understand like we've been saying all night, it doesn't okay. matter. Tomorrow's right. another day. You still yes. gotta go to work. You still gotta pay your mortgage. You gotta pay you, your light bill. You know everything. what we should do? Like the, the monsters do the uh, kicks for guns. We should give cash for MAGA haps. Like, MAGA haps. <laughs> wow! Like, if it doesn't go, if it wow. doesn't go their way, that's funny. We should. You know what I got? I got yeah. from Wendy's. I got all these free Frosty coupons. I've been uh, yeah, saving we get Frosty coupons so with you, MAGA you hats? We'll, we'll set up a table outside the studio. You bring your MAGA hat, you're going to get a Frosty. And that's more than Trump gave you in the past four years. Yeah, How yeah. about that? And, and I know a lot of Trump supporters, they say you might be racist. And I got the, I'm throwing the quotations up. You can't get vanilla instead of chocolate. Oh, <laughs> wow. <laughs> Oh man! Wow! Oh man! man. So we gonna do some. Uh, no, let's do national holidays. Let's do national holidays first. Um, okay. so it is November the third. Mm -hmm. Um, so today is also um National Homemaker Day. Mm. Oh, Homemaker Day. That's me. I'm a homemaker. Yeah, yeah. Or, or a very sexist holiday because they say women are homemakers, but James say he a homemaker, and James got so we cool. Oh, you can't say that on the radio. Oh, I forgot. I sure came. My bad. You, you should say breast assistance. Oh, James got <laughs> breast assistance, y'all. <laughs> hey, but I'm a homemaker, though. Man, home I cook. I clean. I do all the stuff at home. I'm a homemaker. Ain't nothing wrong with that, man. No, I, I, man. I, I got a job, and I still cook and clean. So, yeah, bro. <laughs> I'm a Wait a minute. What did you say? You're a home what? 
homemaker. Okay, I heard that wrong over on this okay. side. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> uh, like, uh, I'm not sure we can say that either. Yeah. yeah. And, and this is my other one, November 3rd. And, and then this would be a good question for y'all. Today is National Sandwich Day. Ah, oh, so Michael, my I ask you, Michael, you can go first. Your favorite sandwich. Easy, hands down. Uh, if you go up to uh, Milwaukee, you go to Glorioso's, you ask for the meatball parmesan, but they put the pepperoni and the salami on it. Delicious. Second runner up, you go over the Lee Road there. You go to Rhino Subs and you get yourself a chicken parmesan sandwich. And okay. it is delicious. I wish, but you know, Rhino's closed down. Well, then you go back to Milwaukee. <laughs> <and you> go, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> Sorry, I thought the other place was open. Uh, was wrong. Okay, James, you'll go. You'll go. What's your sound? Oh, not a you, favorite you can have place. two or three. You can have two yeah. or three sandwiches. <laughs> not, a, not a place, but a, a type of sandwich. I've always been a fan of the uh, Turkey Club. Okay. I've <laughs> always loved a good, a, I mean, quality deli turkey, sliced just right, put on toasted white bread, mayo, lettuce, and some good bacon. Bro, mm. I, I, uh, and some White brine. bread, mayo, lettuce. Yeah, you're a Republican. I am. No um, <laughs> also, though, I love when it's made right a good Cuban sandwich. Oh, I love, man, who yeah. doesn't love a good Cuban? It's yeah. pressed hot. The outside is crunchy, flaky. Mm. The bread, the pickles, yeah. the mustard. Well, they use, the they use ham. pork in that, right? They, yeah, they use yeah. pernil and they use ham, Swiss mm. cheese, pickles, mustard, and, and that Cuban bread. Oh, so good. <laughs> nice. Yeah, right. man. What about you, Ken? What do you like? I would say, I, I'm with you, Mike. I'm, I'm going to run down my list. I would say my favorite would be an Italian. Mm -hmm. a, an Italian, I don't know what it is, man. And that would be at um, um, La Spada's. La Spada's La yeah, La Spada's. is my favorite. Um, then I like I like a club. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Sandwich. With turkey, ham, bacon. Yeah. And, uh, and then I'm going to go back hood, man. I, a, a good old bologna and, and sandwich. Just a regular, a regular ass bologna sandwich. Yeah, fried regular. bologna. A regular <laughs> fried bologna with some mustard, with some mustard oh, on it. Oh, and a kidding. regular fried, fried bologna sandwich, man. I'm happy with that, man. Mm -hmm. I'm so having fun. I can't believe none of y'all said grilled cheese. I was, I think, nah, I was thinking when you guys nah, are grilled cheese. When, when, when we were kids, maybe, but nah. Peanut butter nah, and jelly? Really. Peanut butter and jelly? Yo, I, I ain't gonna had, lie. Go ahead, Mike. Talk about it. I, I had peanut butter and jelly eight, every day of my life from first grade up until sophomore year of high school. Pack my own lunch, peanut butter and jelly every single day. And, it's but a you, good sandwich. But you hate it now because, you know, with me as a nope. kid, I said bologna, but I won't be, eat bologna now. But it was one of my favorite sandwiches growing up. But mm -hmm. I won't eat bologna now. Are, are you disgusted I'll, by it? No, man. I'm I'm good with it. Uh, you know, I I got the stuff around here. I'll do one up like once a week maybe. I'll have peanut butter and jelly. But when I get sick of them is when I take that uh, Bahamas gig at the Atlantis Resort and you're uh -huh. down there for two weeks. Because mm. there's nothing cheap to eat down in the Bahamas, man. No. So I'll go to the grocery store on my first day there, pick up like two loaves of bread, peanut butter and jelly, and you don't have anything in the room like a microwave or oven or anything at the Atlantis Resort. So I will <laughs> budget myself because I'm like you guys. I try to go on the road and make money, not lose money. Yeah. So even, even yeah. when I'm down there, man, it's like <laughs> you could quite easily blow what you make on food down there at the restaurants wow. and stuff like that. And I'm just like, no, nope. I go down there and I'm every day at lunch, peanut butter and jelly, peanut butter and jelly, peanut butter and jelly. And by the time I'm done with that two week run every year, I don't care if I see another peanut butter and jelly until the next year. <laughs> I hear you. Okay. I so we you. talk about our favorite. Well, let's talk about a sandwich sandwich that you just hate that you mm -hmm. will never ever eat. And I start, I start cause mm -hmm. I had to look them up cause I got to remember the names. Mm -hmm. I don't like Reuben. Okay. And I don't like pastrami. Yeah, those are the two, I, those are the two sandwiches I will not touch. I mm. just I don't like the taste of them. I just ugh, they just they just they just don't do it for me. Those are the two sandwiches that I I I, I can't do, man. James, what? Give me some. I'm, I'm going to have to disagree eat. with you. First off, man, uh, pastrami at two J's, delicious. Mm. I won't do a uh, Reuben. I don't like sauerkraut on a sandwich. Yeah, sauerkraut. I think that's weird, disgusting. And I won't do a Rachel. That is a Reuben, but it's made with turkey instead of uh, uh, pastrami. I, I won't do it. I think it's disgusting. I'm um, trying to think of any other. He sandwich said a Rachel. Though. It's a name for. I didn't even know it's that. It's called a Rachel. Yeah. Oh, Rachel. so oh, uh, so that's the female version. A Reuben and a Rachel. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I never even. That's, I've never heard of a Rachel before. 
Yeah, that's a real. I'm that's I'm a it? fat guy. I'm a, yeah. and a chef. So yeah, yeah of course yeah. I know that, man. Well, Mike, I know you said peanut butter and jelly because you eat it too much. But what's a sandwich that you just won't touch? Um, I think when it comes down to it, there's there's sandwiches that I used to have that my parents said I loved when I was a kid. Like my mom swears up and down. I used to eat tuna fish sandwiches like crazy. I won't go uh, near tuna fish, man. Yeah, I like you can't. Tuna. You I can't pay like me to eat tuna fish. Uh uh-uh. uh. Sandwich. Oh, I got it. Yeah. I will. I can't eat because the texture. I can't eat an egg salad sandwich. Okay. I haven't had yeah. that. I haven't had that. I, I don't haven't like had. It. Dude, I, today, today, um, not today, but Sunday, for the month of November, is this is my comedy anniversary month. And um, so every day I'm posting old jokes that I used yeah, to do. Yeah, yeah. I and so I did the I did the bread bag one on Sunday. And that one was funny, the, man. one time I didn't get I didn't put that in, but my mama made me an egg salad sandwich. Mm. And we had been on that field trip for six hours. Mm-hmm. Man, we opened that sa- it smelled so bad. The teacher was like, I got a bag of lunch for you, baby. Don't just Don't throw that. Aww. She said, yeah. just, just throw it away. Aww. But I, you know what, Mike? I'm not a big, big tuna fish fan. I'm not I a like huge fan. I'm not a huge, but I, I love eat it. it. But I like it with tuna fish and tomatoes on it. Mm. Yep, I, do I don't know, man. Tomatoes. Just just opening it up. You got to mix it with like what mayonnaise to make it work. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and, yeah, and just, you know we don't do mayonnaise. Black folks don't do mayonnaise like that. So it, what you have to be with? something? No, no, we will do it for like tuna fish, oh, okay. um, devil eggs, potato mm. salad, like stuff like yeah. that. But I'm not putting mayonnaise on just a regular sandwich. But I, I think mm-hmm. when it comes down to is I you know I also like I'm a big Philly cheesesteak and French dip oh, fan no. like oh, I love those man, but I, I think when it comes down to it is I'll eat just about any sandwich but man I hate when they serve you a sandwich and it's like don't call this a sandwich if I can't pick it up with my hands and eat it yeah. like a lot of restaurants you go to and it's just so messy it's like all right this is gonna be a fork and knife situation you know yeah. if I order a sandwich I want something I can pick up without I it all pick falling it all over the place well, I hate. I'll- I'm the, Mike, what's the French dip? The French dip? What is that? Because that's oh. the one you dip in. What's the, what's the yeah, meat like for that? Because I've never had French, it. French onion soup. No, you not French. French. No, au jus. It's like the it's like the juice sauce. The, yeah, no onions or anything. But what's it's the uh, meat? It's prime rib, right? Roast beef. Oh, okay, I've never had that. I've just seen people do it before. I've never had it. What's Delicious. a good place to get if it? If you from? go to a place that's not expensive, it's going to be roast beef. But Mike's right; it's supposed to be prime rib. If you go yeah. to some place, it, they give you French onion soup to dip it in but a lot of places just au jus yeah i was gonna say uh can i gotta tell you ale house has actually a really good french dip sandwich you can't go wrong people right? sleep people sleep on the ale house they have great specials there Y'all, let me tell you something man yep. me and kermit went to the ale house one night and the lady it convinced we, we right after working out she says get the meatloaf she mm-hmm. says at lunchtime the meatloaf is this i said man let me try this meatloaf and when I tell you, my wife makes an amazing meatloaf, and I hope she don't listen to this episode. El House meatloaf is the it's best banging. meatloaf I've ever. Really, it's so it's so good. Really, it's so I, good. I bro. would take you to my favorite meatloaf, but I'm not sure. I'd have to call ahead and see if I can get you guys in. It's at a, <laughs> it's at Cracker Barrel. <laughs> it's, I know you don't like their biscuits, but maybe the last take some Bojangles biscuits with us. Yo, I'm just laughing at the cracker part. <laughs> Can I say that? Am I gonna get oh, in trouble, dude? Dude, they're gonna the, t- talk about a place that have Trump wins is gonna be packed on <laughs> Thursday morning. <laughs> We're gonna go to commercial break. We'll be right back, man. Real laughs on real radio. I'm here for the freedom fritters. <laughs> Welcome back to Real Labs and Real Radio. I'm your host, Ken Miller. I'm standing in for Miguel Colon Jr. Like we said, he is locked up tonight. So please, guys, make sure you go to 33rd.com. Look up Miguel, Miguel Colon Jr. Put some money, put oh, some money on that dude books, man. And also look up David Dollar. Put some money on my brother books, too. I, 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 I was going to say, man, before we go too far, someone was asking. I was going to say a local comedian, but since you put his name out there, someone said, yeah, David Jolly is locked up. And I'm like, yeah. oh, cool. Let's go throw some money. And then they're like, oh, here's his cash app. I'm like, dude, it's been a while since I've sent money to someone in prison, but I'm pretty sure you can't nah, cash Nah, you can't do them. cash app. Nah, you yeah. can't. They, I'm like, they want you to just lay low. So, no, nah, no, nah, they want you to do cash apps, so and when he gets out, it's money waiting for him to get out. Oh, okay. So yeah. I decided that if that's what you're gonna do, I wait for him to get out and just give him seventy five dollars. Because here's, like, here's here's what they don't tell you about when you put money in, like someone's commissary or something like that. A lot of times, it's not like they get straight access to the money you gave. What they start doing is like, oh, someone put money in. Well, we've been covering your fees on this, this, and this. So they'll take your money towards things that the state has been paying for. And I'm like, dude, 
I don't, I don't want to do that. I don't I'm, wanna... I'm glad you told me that because I have a cousin locked up in North Carolina. I, uh, she's on my, she's in my, we have our budget for the month and, and mm-hmm. she's on my budget. I sent her $40 a month. Yeah. So it's like one of those things. I, I'm sure you got to check state to state or even county to county yeah. and see what the deal is. But when I found out that I'm like, so you're not even seeing that $20. He's like, and my buddy who was in was like, no, dude. So basically someone who ha- doesn't have them sending money in is basically the state's paying for like, okay, you get your bare minimums on this. He's like, but when you send me $20, they go, oh, good. You owe us for this, this, and this. He's like, so, you know, at some point I got to be like, hey, I appreciate it, but don't don't waste your money on me, you know? Wow. Wow. Yeah. I didn't know Jolly was locked up. So shout out to Jolly, man. Hope yeah, you get man. Shout out to our baby brother, man. And now, now man, Sam, man, vote for Trump, man. He, he, he ain't going to take your commissary. He ain't going <laughs> to take your <laughs> And that other voice you hear is James Aloysius, John. What up, James? Ah, what's going on, baby? I love the quote that uh, 50 Cent gave to everybody about why he's voting the way he is. He said, look, I'm voting for Trump. He goes, I make good money, and I'm not paying that Biden tax. Because if I paid that, I'd be known as 20 Cent instead of 50. <laughs> <laughs> and you know he recanted, it, right? You know he yeah, he did. Yeah, yeah, he really? took it back. Hand- yeah, Chelsea Handler told him that he was being an idiot. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And she also idiot. said... If you change your vote, I'll give you a little something. And he yeah. said so, she an alligator in bed, so but I don't even yeah. know what that means. What what's that mean? I don't know. I wouldn't I wouldn't have sex with alligator. I know that. I, I have <laughs> not thought of that before I until now. And I just thought I about it. And I was like to say no, I don't want it. Nope. I know that. <clears throat> what was that credit card that came out a while ago that was it uh Rustling. The rush card, yeah, rush, rush card, card. The card. Yeah. yeah. If yeah. you signed up, he put five dollars in your account because because Trump came out two days. Which can we point out that it seems like Trump's pushing a lot of stuff through in his last week. He's like, "Hey, here's my health care plan I've been talking about for the past four years today," and that was like Thursday. And then today he comes out with the, uh, you know, I've been working on this platinum plan, which is yeah, our contract plan. with Black America. Platinum yeah. plan to me sounds like the rush card. It sounds yeah. like a good idea yeah. in theory, but it sounds hey. like something that like three months from now, people are going to be like, you really signed up for that? Hey, <laughs> no, Mike. Killer. We talked about Killer Mike. Yep. Killer Mike read it. and He says, black people, y'all need to go read the platinum plan. Yeah. He said, it's really good. Yeah. yeah. He but, said, it's really good for HBCUs. Speaking, it's really good for small black businesses. Speaking of that, he just met with Lil Wayne, and Lil Wayne is endorsing Trump as well. And First said, of all, he plan. can't even vote. Lil Wayne a felon. Like, yeah, why am I felon. listening to... And then on a the song, Lil Wayne said, I listen to Bono, y'all listen to Dono. Like, you now you flipping. Now you yeah. flipping. You can't turn heel. You can't be Hulk Hogan and then be Hollywood Hogan, Lil Wayne. Mm-hmm. Come on, brother. I want you to vote for Trump. Take your vitamins. Nah, man. Look, <laughs> yeah. look, look here, man. I ain't listening to Lil Wayne. I ain't listening to nobody that can't vote. Lil, Vane, but, Lil Wayne a felon. So, let, you ain't getting deep. I ain't listening to that. Let me, let me ask you this, Ken. With the platinum plan, though, <laughs> As good as it is, it's only as good if you truly believe that the person who's saying he's going to oh, do it oh, is going to oh, do heck, it. Oh, he's not going to do that. So to me, it seems that, like when you're releasing that the week of the election, <laughs> you're pushing for yeah, some last yeah, minute votes, man. Yeah. Now, see, that's the thing, Mike. It, it's been around for a few months. It actually, it's been around. It was normal. It, it was first called Ice Cube had called it the um contract for black america mm-hmm. and and ice cube had pushed it to the republicans you know he they 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 knocked ice cube down for going to meet trump but he wanted to meet both sides and trump was like well i've already had this platinum plan for black america but what's going to happen is if trump does win and he sees the low turnout for black votes he's not about to pass the platinum event plan now mm-hmm. if there's a high turnout for black votes for trump I can see him saying, okay, y'all, y'all had your boy back. Here's your here's your platinum plan. Here you go. But if 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 it comes out and and seven percent of black America voted for him, you think Trump about to pass the platinum well, plan? He's he he has a track record of not doing everything he promises. Right. Like we still haven't seen the wall. And he told everybody, look, we're gonna build this wall, Mexico's gonna pay for it. We still haven't seen that. So mm-hmm. Do we take his word in good faith and we say, all right, yeah, let's go ahead and push him through. And then you just, what happens after that? No, <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. The wall makes me laugh because most of the people who are Republican and vote for a wall got illegal immigrants watching their kids right now. <laughs> 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 they got somebody yeah. in California right there that don't speak any Spanish in Texas. They don't speak any English at well, all. Ken, I'm going to stop you 
right there as a Republican. They're not illegals. They're called alternative citizens. <laughs> <laughs> man, let's That's get our politics called. and let's talk birthdays, man. We got some 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 really funny birthdays today. One of the first birthdays is the sister of Kim Kardashian, Kendall Jenner. Birthday. Mm-hmm. Oh, the model. Yeah. The, mo- the model. Isn't she worth like more? Um, too much. Too much like, money. Like what is it? Like a, a what is it? Like a billion? It's something stupid. Let me look it up. How old is she? Um, She's in her early twenties, maybe. Yep, twenty five. She'll be twenty five years old on November third. Kendall Jenner's net worth, which is funny, because anytime I guess my Google knows if I t- search a celebrity, because as soon as I type the celebrity name, it's like net worth. Net worth. Right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. She's right now currently worth forty five million dollars. She's worth mm-hmm. forty five million dollars. Kim Kardashian, who is the richest Kardashian, is worth nine hundred million. But I think she got her money. Was it makeup? I think I she got money so. of like makeup. Mo- or she's something. a model, and yeah. I think her other. I think her sister does a makeup. Is it a sister? Yeah. Other, the other young one. It might be the other sister. Then. It might be yeah. the sister that does makeup. <laughs> All right. So the next birthday we have is Ella May. Okay. You know who Ella May is my boo. Booed up. Booed, booed up. Yeah. Her name's booed up. Booed so it's her birthday, and she also got a song too on her album. It's so thug, and I'm like, when did R and B music get this gangster? When yeah. did we get to the point where like you, hey girl, I met you at the club, pop, pop. You shot me two times. We in love. Like where the love? Like where you know, the love? Hey, man? you know how my mama get down when it comes <laughs> yeah, to dating. Men. That is true. That is true. <laughs> that is true, man. Also, we got um, Jocelyn Hernandez, and she is from I think real one of the Real Housewives nope. shows. She's from Love and Hip Hop. Love and Hip Hop is her birthday. Yeah. It's her birthday as well. We got a black activist. It is Colin Kaepernick's birthday. Colin Kaepernick's birthday. Absolutely. Colin Kaepernick, and dude, other than that, ooh, the man that killed Apollo Creed's son is Drago's birthday today. Mm. Oh, Dolph Lundgren. Lundgren. Dolph Lundgren uh, killed Apollo Creed. You. Son, yeah. the second greatest boxer of all time behind Muhammad Ali, baby, Apollo yeah. Creed. And true. Worst He-Man ever, but, you know. Yeah. Yo, do you know I've never seen that movie? Master yeah. of the Universe. I've I'm never gonna, seen I'm Master of the Universe. I'm not even going to tell you to see it. Man. Nope. Me and I, I, I think I rented it. I think I was talking to somebody about it. Mm-hmm. And so I, I, I didn't rent it. I think it was free on like um, Tubi mm-hmm. or one of them channels. And I started mm-hmm. watching it. And I was like, did he just teleport to New York? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh, oh. <laughs> I said, yeah. That's and so see, dumb. Dude, that's, that's the worst thing when movies do that. Like, like say He Man or the Smurfs, it's like you've built this whole world somewhere else, but then you go, oh, we don't have the budget to recreate that, so let's send them to like, why the hell was He Man in New York? Exactly, yeah. it's like we got to come up with the storyline. Then we can't afford the CGI graphics to do Orko, who is He Man's sidekick. So we're gonna do this little troll like doll you've never seen from any yep. of the cartoons ever, and then uh, we're gonna have one battle scene with Skeletor. It was and- it was so bad. I so saw a documentary bad, on that movie, Mike, and that's yeah. exactly what happened, sir. Yeah. Everything you just said and is the reason it happened. It came down to the fight scene with Skeletor, and, and they're they like, hey, they, they choreographed this whole great fight scene, and then they're like, uh, we don't have the budget left for it. I'll tell you what, you him with the staff, you him with the sword, he wins. And that was it. Yeah. Yep. So do you think if they did a He-Man movie now, and we're older, we're all in our 40s, they, we got the CGI for we got way better CGI than we had in the 80s when it came it's out. cheaper now. Would mm-hmm. you guys watch it? It yeah, depends He-Man, on maybe not. For me, it all it all depends on the same thing. Who wrote mm-hmm. it? Who's yep. directing? Yeah. And what actors are involved? Yeah, yeah. I just I just feel like I don't want movies from my childhood now. Like I don't want a gargoyles movie. Like everybody wants a gargoyle movie. I don't want I don't want a cartoon from the eighties and nineties made into a mm-hmm. movie anymore. Like now, I'm, that, I'm over it. That now. being said, I might I might go see a live action Thundercats. I was yeah, me I was like <laughs> oh, I'm thinking man. I'm thinking like yeah I would go see yeah. Gargoyles, yes. And I would love to see I don't man I don't I don't know. Not. I think because I Transformers up, messed it up. Panthro? For me. Yeah. I think Transformers mm. messed it up for me because I w- I they they took they took the stuff like why is Bumblebee not talking throughout all yeah. these movies? Yeah. <laughs> like every movie he's in, Bumblebee can't talk. Like all, like what from the cartoon did Bumblebee not have a voice? You know what ruined it for me? Like I've only seen the first Transformers, and I never watched any of the other ones because I was a huge Transformers. Loved the animated movie, huge, everything else. But fan. when I saw the first quote unquote live action with the CGI and everything, the time they took to transform, like all the yeah, yeah, I didn't need any of that. Yeah, I no, didn't yeah. need 
any of that. It was yeah. too, 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 too. And then also, at least in the cartoon, it was kind of realistic. When they transformed, they transformed into something that was like that size, you know? But like that first Transformers, didn't they have like a CD player transform into like basically a dwarf robot? I'm like, dude, <laughs> there's not enough material there yeah, yeah, to become yeah, that yeah. big. It just, yeah, yeah. I, I that wish was that wave. Transformers, the, the cartoon, the, the original movie, mm -hmm. I just wanted them to make that into the live action. Yeah. Just take they, that right there and make it live action. That's all they, we asked for. They did, um, but it came a little too late. What happened was, when they first introduced the live action Transformers movies, they thought they had to change everything to make it more modern. They didn't. What we wanted to see was what we call Gen 1 robots. We wanted to look like the cartoon. They mm -hmm. finally got around to doing that when they did the Bumblebee movie. So if you haven't yeah. seen Bumblebee, it's just like Gen Generation 1. It's what you were looking for, Ken, but for a lot of people, a little bit too late. Yeah, it's a little bit too late because the last Transformer yeah. movie is when they had when um Bumblebee. Unicron. No, not not Bumblebee. The one, the one, the last Transformers movie. Unicron. That's right. Unicron the, the planet was, that would yeah, transform. The, yeah, yeah and, they, and Unicron was finally in that movie. I'm like, well, Unicron should have been. And remember when they brought the Dinobots out? We were all excited yeah. to go to oh, Dinobots. My gosh, yeah. And then the Dinobots were like. That's not the Dinobots from my childhood. It's not. Like, it was just the big Tyrannosaurus Rex that transformed. You know what I mean? I was just like, so yeah. I, I don't know. I'm just that guy that I don't want to see any more movies from when I was a kid, a cartoon now made into a live. I know you guys want to see Gargoyles. I don't want to see Gargoyles. Yeah. I, I would I, love I really that. Don't. I was a Gargoyle fan. If, if you did it the right way, you wrote it the right way, yeah, I'd love to see it. Okay, well, who who's your writer, director, producer then? Who you want? Uh, Josh Whedon. Mm -hmm. Okay, and Josh Whedon is Iron Man, Marvel right? movie. Uh, oh, yeah. um, let me take that back. The 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 Russo brothers. They're the ones that changed the tone in the Marvel movies. They did Winter Soldier, and they mm -hmm. wrote all the movies after that. Yeah. The the Russo brothers would be amazing. I, I would watch anything John Favreau puts out because he is yes he is he did, such, he did yeah. Mandalorian, but he's yep. such a fan. He's such a fan of the actual True. canon that watching True. someone who enjoys it write yeah, it and do it, yeah. I'm like, yeah, I can get on board with it. Who him did the, the recent Batmans? It's Nolan, right? Which one? Uh, the Batmans with Christopher, Christopher Bell. Ain't that Nolan? Didn't Nolan do all no, those? He, Nolan did those, yes. Okay. You wouldn't think he would be great for Gargoyles? Gargoyles is such a dark cartoon. Dark. Maybe. Mm, he's such a, it. It's such a dark cartoon. I think that Nolan... Might make that because dark Batman is a dark no. character. When it comes to creatures, there's one person who does it great, and that's the guy that did Pan's Labyrinth. What's his name? He won the uh, Oscar for uh, Shape of Water. Uh, my gosh! Oh my god! He did the first and second uh, Hellboy movies. Gatoro, Gil Gil okay, okay, yeah, Gil he yeah, does creature yeah. movies the best. So like he, him or Bell, yeah, I, I yeah, he I he would destroy it. Yeah, that. that guy's amazing. Yeah. Okay, well, well, we got to wrap it up. Um, um, Hurley, I know me and you together this weekend. Yeah, yeah. we're in Auburndale, man. Yeah, Auburndale, and James, you anywhere this weekend? I'm only performing on Wednesday. I'm going to be in Sebring. I'm not performing the weekend because it's me and my lovely wife's 19-year wedding anniversary. Happy November anniversary. Oh, nice. Happy anniversary. And Wednesday night, I will be at Champions Gate um, too. So nice. Yeah, That's a great that's a room. fun room. Yeah, great fun room, man. man. Well, hey, man, we got to get up out of here. It is election night, guys. No matter who wins, please be, be safe okay. tomorrow. Don't do nothing stupid. And like they say, it's going to be okay. For James John, Mike Hurley, he, Miguel Colon Jr., who's currently locked up right now. Have a good night. God bless you. He got COVID.